Well, good morning, folks. Welcome to another video. And if you're new here, I'm Tyler. Really appreciate you stopping by. I'm feeling super blessed this morning, guys. We took a chance. We're about two hours outside of Ottawa. We had to battle some unmaintained roads to get up here. It was a little sketchy at times, but it paid off. Behind me is a tiny, tiny lake absolutely loaded with brook trout. Another factor at play here is there's a massive storm coming this evening, guys. In your Friday evening commute, and then overnight as the system continues to track on in. So I'm really hoping today as the pressure drops, the bite really fires up. Let's get out there. So right now I'm just heading to the other side of the lake. Typically with lakes like this that are just big bowls, you want to look for features around the lake. So like beaver dams or, you know, cattails coming out of the water. What I did is I went onto the uh, ministry website, Fish on online great resource to find stock bodies of water find areas where you know you can catch the type of fish you want to catch from there i use the satellite view use the topographic map and i was able to key in on what looks to be a big weed flat right up in front of me here now the goal today is really to target the brook trout shallow typically that's where i've had the most success in an area where you know we'll see the fish for most of the day coming in and out so what we're going to do is just drill a bunch of holes around the area try to get a lay of the land Damn, the ministry website is completely wrong with the depth. This was supposed to be about six feet here. It's actually 40. So we're gonna go that away, closer to shore. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing here though. What I thought was trees coming out of the water was actually just a marked sight hole. Whoever made that sight hole, great job marking it. That's what you gotta love to see right there. We found some shallow water, folks. Ooh, okay, now we're getting into it here. Well, that's why we got out here early. We wanted to get set up, get all our holes drilled so we have options all day, and we're not gonna be spooking the fish. Got in the lay of the land. We're right off this marshy, weedy point right here. It's the most unique piece of structure on this lake. So we're gonna set up shop right here. I settle on 10 feet of water. Nice little drop right here. So they're gonna be cruising the line, going up shallow. We got a bunch of holes shallow if we want to do some hole hopping too, so. Let's get hunkered down, get some heat going, and let's get our first rookie of the day. Freaking stoop! No, I'm not hotboxing my tent. It's just that cool in here. We got the heat going now, though. We got her attached to the propane tank. Just gonna get situated, get set up how we always do, and get to jigging. A few moments later. That was friggin' awesome. It's like sight fishing without the sight fishing hole. Just looking down the hole, down at the bottom, just trying to see my lure, and I just saw this nice little brookie come up. Beautiful little brookie came up and just smacked my little tube. Beautiful little fish. So for all my guys in Ontario, I'm actually pretty excited to try these out today. I'm gonna run them on the jaw jacker. Jumping on the hype train. Heard nothing but good things. We're gonna try these SI flies, Simcoe bugs. Heard, I'm sure you've heard of them before. All my buddies who fish trout have told me that the trout go absolutely nuts for these. So I'm gonna start by tipping this black ice color with a nice little piece of worm. We'll get her about two feet off the bottom and uh, hopefully we can get a couple on the jaw jacker. If you've seen our recent trout video up at Bowman's Outfitters, a reminder to make sure your fishing line is on the trigger of the jaw jacker. Yo, you got that. He's got that. Yeah, it's off the trigger, right? Oh, man. Oh, my God. You haven't seen that video yet? I'll link it right at the end of this one. You're going to want to go check it out after. Insane, insane trout for Eastern Ontario. A lot of the times, dropping it to the bottom, slowly pulling it off will make it look like a bug coming out of the mud, depending on what you're using. A lot of times, it doesn't really matter. They'll just come and hammer it. That's exactly what happened there. So it's a good sign. Good to see a mark come in. Oh, we just got hit on the jacker, guys. Okay. They're starting to come around. It's been a slow start. It's interesting. That hit, just double check, corresponds with the pressure, atmospheric pressure starting to drop. So this is a good sign. Sun's finally up over the entire lake. The brook trout are going to be on the prowl, starting to put the feed on. I'm going to go around with my little black tube. We're going to do some hole hopping, see if we can get any another couple holes. Let the jaw jacker do some work in here. Give it a couple minutes per hole and we'll just keep circuiting like that. Now, just to give you guys an idea, this hole, 35 feet, and then our shack's in 10 feet of water. So you can see how it just gradually drops down into a bowl. No fish marked on this pass. We're gonna hunker back down in the shack, put some time in and let's get it. The easier to access lakes, despite having really high stocking numbers, they can get like hit pretty hard. You gotta set your expectations accordingly. Typically, the lakes that are harder to get into are gonna give you the bigger 
badder, meaner fish. Switched it up for the afternoon on the jaw jacker. We're gonna try the hot pink Simcoe bug with a big old uh, piece of shrimp on there. Just load on a couple more worms here. Oh. Yeah, guys. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Here we go. Well, grind and you shall receive, man. We've been making adjustments all morning. It's been really slow. I mean, we just got a beautiful little brookie. They're so tricky. <laughs> Look at this guy, man. He's so tiny and cool. So hard to show you. Just a tiny little brookie. Nice. Fine trout are the trickiest to figure out and the most rewarding fish to catch because it's so tricky to catch them sometimes. Like today, they're tapping it, but they're not fully grabbing that lure. Oh, that's a nice mark, come on. Oh, that was a good fish. Oh, there he is, come on. That's a nice fish. Oh man. A nice little visit from conservation. The biggest fish I've ever come out of there, yeah. I saw a picture, it was 18 pounds. A rainbow. That That's like crazy. a steelhead, man. I know. Holy shit. He was saying that he's talked to a bunch of other guys out today in nearby area. A couple fish, but nothing too crazy. They, they said the bite's been pretty slow, similar to what we're experiencing here. So makes you feel good. Lets you know you're not doing something wrong. It's just, you know, how the day's going so far, so. A lot of fish get stocked in deep sort of bowl style lakes. And the reason for that is so they can survive throughout the year. But one thing you have to remember is that a lot of the time these fish will just be doing laps around the lake essentially. So, you know, you'll see a flurry of activity and then it's gonna be like another lull. Then you're gonna see a flurry of activity and that's exactly what's been happening today. And it just really reaffirms the fact that you just have to remember, you know, if you're not seeing action all day, they're out there doing laps, scooping foods. That's why you gotta be ready at a second's notice because when they come in, you gotta capitalize. Well, folks, not every day is gonna be lollipops and brookies. These brook trout were so freaking finicky today, but we still got a couple beauties and, oh, oh, that brown trout? Yeah, you're gonna wanna click on that and watch that video next. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna see the next adventure. We'll see you guys at the next spot.